Today I'm talking about financing your real estate. Hey everyone, welcome to the 15th episode of Ballin' with Spawn. Thanks for joining us today. Please hit the subscribe button if you have not done so yet so you'll be notified when new episodes drop. Invite your friends. Let's create a wealth building community. Leave comments. Ask questions because we'll be answering through, answering them throughout the show. And you know, really moving on to financing. If you haven't been paying attention, the last couple episodes, back to episode like eleven or twelve, we've been talking about income and raising your income, operating expenses, the net operating income and cap rates. Today we're talking about financing and why you want to finance and why it's smart in a lot of situations to finance a property as long as there's the cash flow is there to support it. And I hear about people all the time talking about not being in debt, but look, if going into some debt is going to start paying you very well, and it's a pretty safe investment, I'm someone that's going to go ahead and do that all the time. So it's a tool, right? So last episode, we talked about a cap rate, getting a 9% return on a $200,000 price with these expenses. Everything up here is going to stay the same except we're going to have a down payment of 20% instead of using our cash to purchase the whole thing. So we're going to have a down payment of 20%. So 20% of $200,000, we're going to put $40,000 in from our savings into this property. We're going to get a loan from a bank or institution or a wealthy friend or you know whatever for $160,000. And a loan is really, yes, we're borrowing the money, but it's an investment for someone else. So when the bank... You know, when the bank is giving you money, that's them investing. They're investing in you. They have, you've given them the right and the opportunity to invest. So go into the bank with some strength, right? Um, but now the same thing all applies. Okay, so we have a $160,000 loan, $40,000 we put into the property. That gives us the total of $200,000, right? Same deal as before <clears throat> when we didn't uh, finance anything. $3,000 of income per month, $1,500 expenses, net op- or operating expenses per month. Net operating income is $1,500 per month. Now, what we, what we went out and did was we showed, you know, we got our accepted offer. We went to the banks and showed them our pro formas and what the cash flows on this thing is going to be looking like, you know, projected and stuff like that. And let's just say, for example, the bank gave us a 30-year amortization. So what that means, a 30-year am. What that means is it's a 30 year, like a 30 year mortgage. A lot of times you'll see 15 year, you can see 20, 25, 30. Um, And what seven year fixed rate means, this is a term, so the interest rate in this deal is gonna be the same for seven years. And after seven years, what's gonna happen is if you don't refinance, what's gonna happen is it's, the interest rate is gonna, it, it, it could either jump up or it could jump way down, whatever the going rates are that time. So, When you get to a certain point, it's always good to look into refinancing, which is another episode. But let's say we got a 4% interest rate. We got locked in for seven years, a 30-year amortization. Now, we have the income. We have the operating expenses, and we've got the net operating income. So after that, here's $533 for interest payment, and that's on this loan. That $533 is interest. So the cool thing about this and the benefit of when you're running some businesses and everything to have this is it's a tax write-off, all right? So it's going to help on the come tax season. $231 is going towards the principals. $231 every single month is going towards this loan. You can pay more than that if you want to, but it has to be at least that. If you pay more than that, it'll just pay this thing down faster, which is a great way to go, right? So net income per month after the loan, after paying off the loan, $736 per month. Multiply that by 12, you have $8,832. And this can either be reinvested, it can be a cash distribution. I'm all about reinvesting it. But now look, if we did not have this, right, we would have... So here's where you come out of the cash and cash return, right? So... Back here... We had a 9% return on our cash because we paid $200,000 and we walked away at the end of the year with $18,000. So $18,000 to find your rate of return, what you do is since we walked home with $18,000 on this deal, we put in $200,000 cash, we're getting a 9% return on the cash that we put in. Over here, look what happens. 
remember, we didn't put in $200,000. We put in $40,000 of our own cash, right? So we put in one-fifth the amount. And we walked away with 8832 So when you divide that by the amount we put in, you have a 22% cash on cash return. So that is the power of being able to leverage your money. Now, what you want to be able to do is make sure you have plenty of room here. You, I, what I did when I went out and got these, I made sure the property was cash flowing, even though, the, you know, and, it, and it, I made sure the property was cash flowing, and I also made sure that it was poorly operated so that I knew that I could go in, fix the thing, get the rents way up. And when you do that, it's very safe. It's, it's much safer at that point to go out and borrow money to go out and make more money. So look, at, whenever I'm doing a deal, I look at how fast I can get my initial cash back out of it. Okay, because you set, you're setting up a corporation, you're doing all this, you're pretty, you're pretty protected, all right? So if something were to go wrong, the business fails, but you're all right personally. But when I set, you know, so when I'm putting money into a deal, I'm always looking at how fast can I get my initial money back out of the deal. Well, at 22% annually, I'm going to get that $40,000 back a lot faster than the, you know, than... Then the nine thousand on the last page, the the eighteen thousand on the two hundred thousand dollars I put in, it was only a nine percent return. So I will get my money back a lot faster. And something you got to remember too is that this is just the first year. You know, the next year your return, odds are the rents, the rents are going to go up. You know, three, four, five percent, and in in a good time, you know, um, expenses will go up maybe one or two percent is all. So this difference will start to grow. Your income will go up. Your expenses will go up too, but much slower. So there'll be more cash here. Maybe next year there's 10000 Maybe next year you have profit and that income of 10000 Now when you divide that by 40000 that the original money you put in, you got 25% return year two. Right? So that's the power of it. There's also a lot of power, and we'll talk about in the upcoming episodes, when you get to refinance because you've been paying down the principal on the loan and hopefully you've raised the value. So when you refinance, there'll be a huge opportunity to go out and get some more real estate um, to, you know, to, to continue to grow your business. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.